Most students learn the Pythagorean theorem as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Where if, say, this were a, b, and c, that the um, capital letters are for angles, lowercase letters are the sides opposite that. So over here, a would be 12, a lowercase b, opposite angle b is 5, and, and c, lowercase c, um, would be the hypotenuse opposite angle C. And so A squared plus B squared equals C squared works. But the reason why I'm not a fan of A squared plus B squared equals C squared is because a lot of times uh, regions of exams, state exams, throw in a little trick where they'll say A, B, and C. Where, yeah, lowercase A is, is still a side that's 12 and that's a, a leg, but lowercase B is not a leg. Lowercase b is the hypotenuse because angle b is the right angle. And lowercase c is the other leg of 5. And so in this case, the theorem would go a squared plus c squared equals b squared. And sometimes the triangles are labeled e, f, and g. There's no a, b, or c. And so I'm not the biggest fan of that style of the Pythagorean theorem. The way I prefer to teach students the Pythagorean theorem is leg squared plus the other leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So no matter how your triangle is labeled, or even if it doesn't have letters, like in these examples, you know which is which and where it goes. Now the triangle's got three sides. The longest side is the hypotenuse. And that is also opposite the 90 degree angle, which we have marked with our, our little box here. The other two sides are called legs. And so your Pythagorean theorem is the two legs squared, so 5 squared plus 12 squared equal to the hypotenuse. In this case, we don't know the hypotenuse, so it's x squared. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. x squared stays x squared. 25 plus 144 is 169 equals x squared. Square root of both sides, and we get the missing side, or the hypotenuse in this case, is a length of 13. The problem to the right is similar, except x, the missing side, is not the hypotenuse. This time, the missing side is a leg. So it's the leg squared plus the other leg squared equal to the hypotenuse squared. I mean, the key is that it's always equal to the hypotenuse. Uh, the, the sum of the squares of the two legs is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And so we get x squared plus... 16 equals, um, I'm sorry, over here this was just 5 squared, not 25 squared. Uh, it does turn into 25 squared, however. And when we subtract 16, we get x squared equals 9 square root. The uh, length of the missing side is 3. And this is one of those famous Pythagorean triplets, 3, 4, 5. So is 5, 12, 13. And any ratio of these is also a Pythagorean triplet, like 3, 4, 5 is the uh, length of three sides of a right triangle. Uh, a ratio of that, like if you multiply everything by 2, 6, 8, 10 works, or if you multiply everything by 3, um, 9, 12, 15 works, and so on. The last example I want to do on the bottom just shows that sometimes these sides are, are radicals. And that's no big deal. We still see we have two legs. Here are 1 squared and rad 3 squared. And it's a good idea to always put things in parentheses when you're going to square it, especially negative numbers, because negative numbers square to positive. And sometimes if we don't put it in parentheses, we forget that. Um, equal to, uh, we're missing the hypotenuse, so x squared. Now, 1 squared, 1 times 1 is 1. Radical 3 squared. You could type this into your calculator, but you're going to get 3. And there's two ways to think about that. You could think of it as rad 3 times radical 3 is radical 9, which is a square number, so we just get 3. Or you could also kind of get the concept that we're doing the square root of a number and then we're squaring it. And that kind of cancels each other out. It's almost like plus 5 minus 5, the square root of something squared. And so we just get the number 3. So 1 plus 3 equals x squared. 4 equals x squared. Square root on both sides. The length of our hypotenuse, the missing side, is 2 units.